Hello and welcome to another episode of Trash to Track. In this episode we're going to be looking at this Great Western Hall uh, class loco by Backman that's been sent in to me by a chap called Ruben along with a couple of coaches he wants me to have a look at. So unboxing the loco you can immediately see that this is the split chassis variety, not one of the newer ones, so it could be suffering from the dreaded split axle problem. As I was told it was a runner but not very good. Lifting the tender out, the tender has a rattle so that will have to be uh, addressed as it sounds like the weight has come adrift inside. But overall the loco is in quite good condition and you hook these together by putting that plastic lug under the cab there. So I'm going to do a quick battery test with this as like I said I believe it was a runner but it's just not very good. And I put it on the test track and it appears to run quite nice although it is a little bit lumpy. So that's going to have to warrant further investigation. Putting the loco to run against my finger, I can feel that there's something amiss and now it won't work at all. So we're definitely going to have to crack this open. The first thing we're going to do is look at this rattle in the tender though. So I'm going to remove the couple of screws that hold the tender body to the tender chassis. And we'll see. My theory is that the weight has come adrift. And there we go. The glue holding the weight in place has uh, come off and unstuck over time. So this will be a simple case of reattaching uh, the weight with a small amount of super glue. I always use this Loctite super glue and like I said you don't need much, just a few small blobs just to hold the weight back in place and then I'll set it aside to dry so that none of the fumes cause any of the white bloom on the tender paintwork. Looking at the tender body itself, this is in very good condition and only requires a light dust with this old makeup brush. And then that's the tender pretty much sorted, apart from putting it back together, which we'll do later when I know that the glue is cured. So like I said, we'll set that aside and now we'll focus on the locomotive itself. So doing another battery test direct to the wheels, it is running relatively lumpy like I said. Although it is running, so I'm convinced that the motor's okay. So to remove the wheels and the chassis, you just undo this screw that's underneath the cab. And the body shell should lift off as there's a screw at the back and a clip at the front. You have to be careful on some hull models as there's a part of the side rod that clips into part of the body shell. But on this model, it was already broken off. Uh, removing the further two screws that releases the chassis keeper plate and the front pony wheel. And now we can see the plastic axle bushes and then looking at this you can see there that the plastic axles have split. This is a very common problem with this sort of model. The lubrication seems to make the plastic go brittle and over time it just corrodes and breaks. I mean this isn't holding this axle at all. No wonder it was a lumpy runner. This axle here at the rear is actually in two halves. The centre driving cog doesn't look too bad but I can also see a crack in the front driving wheel. But just look at that, look, that axle is in two halves. How on earth do they expect a model to run with any sort of reliability when these sort of axles have been fitted? Luckily, modern Backman Locos do not have this and they've moved away from this rubbish feature many years ago. I could attempt to glue these together, but the problem is the sort of plastic is very shiny and smooth and um, super glue doesn't always cut it. So a couple of days have gone by now and I've actually ordered some replacements off the eBay which are 3D printed for these broken brittle plastic parts and they've arrived. So I'm going to be replacing them with these. However, as you'll see later on, this is marketed as will fit all um, split chassis locos but the cog supplied in this didn't actually mesh correctly as the teeth were too small. So despite me fitting this to the wheels, I actually revert to the white cog that you can see there. And I repair this with some strong adhesive just to ensure the loco was a good runner. This cog is starting to show signs of splitting, but because the um, axle goes through the cog, it tends to hold it together better. I'm just emphasizing the crack there with that screwdriver. But like I said, I will repair this as the 3D printed one was slightly smaller. And when it was fitted, it would not mesh with the gear on the motor correctly. These replacement axles are um, molded with a square peg so that you can get the quartering on the wheels correct. If the quartering is not correct, the loco will not run and the side rods will not turn around. 
So pushing the nip replacement axles onto the wheel stubs there and um, ensuring that the quartering is correct. I'm going to turn my attention to the chassis now and just give that a bit of a clean up and a lubrication. You can clearly see the split chassis design of this model and you can also see the wear on the chassis there where the axles have rubbed it away over time. So using some conductive lubricant I'm just going to put a tiny amount on each bit where the axles go and I'm also going to oil up the gear train inside as I didn't want to take this motor completely apart. Now I've speeded this footage up just fitting the wheels back into their correct places and putting the cylinder and piston rods uh, back into the cylinder slide bars there. This was quite a fiddly job and in hindsight I should have removed the side rods from the wheels first and then did it. But with some gentle persuasion and patience the wheels fit back in and they're all fitting nicely apart from that middle cog as I said. I'm just going to give the chassis keeper plate a quick clean up now as there is some old hardened grease in this um, gear well at the bottom here. And then I give it a dust over with a brush and we're going to refit that back to the model. Using the uh, old silicon grease on a cocktail stick I'm going to lubricate the gear train and the worm drive there and also put a little bit of oil on it just to dilute the grease slightly and allow it to spread easier. And then I replace the chassis keeper plate ensuring that the front bogey wheels are facing the correct way and then gently tighten the screws. These screws go into the same sort of plastic that splits so try not to over tighten them as you could end up breaking the uh, plastic. Now it is running here but it's not running very satisfactorily, it is very lumpy still so I'm, like I said I'm going to re, um, replace that 3D printed cog with the original white one once I've repaired it. The loco here is running on the test track but as you can see it's not the best and it was all down to that 3D printed cog. You can see there it is quite lumpy. So I've replaced it like I said that is the 3D printed one and it is only a millimetre probably too small but it's enough to make the, um, make the worm gear not run properly. So it will eventually wear out the gear teeth so it's not worth the risk. So I have glued the axles in place on the middle wheel on the original gear wheel and then I test that and it runs a lot smoother as you can see there. And this time I have removed the side rods from the front driving wheel just to make reassembly that little bit easier. It is a shame that these are hard to DCC fit because they are quite reliable motors and the split chassis design is quite good. It's only let down by the cheap plastic parts that corrode with the lubrication on the axles over time. But now that's all done, I'm satisfied now with how this is running and I will turn my attention now to the loco body shell itself. However, there's not that much to do as again, it's in very good condition and it just requires a light dusting over using the old makeup brush as there was quite a lot of dust and fluff on it. This body shell moulding for a Great Western Hall has stood the test of time in my opinion and is rather really good. So to refit the chassis you just engage the front two clips and then return the screw under the cab. I'm just going to give it one final test there as I always do just in case anything's gone amiss upon reassembly. And it looks really, uh, looks really good and a million miles away from the juddery runner we started with. So now I'm going to refit the tender body shell but as you can see here as I'm an idiot I'm trying to fit it on backwards. Wonder why it won't go and then oh yeah what a div. It goes the other way. <laughs> Once it's in the correct way, it simply slots in and then you can replace the two screws that hold it together. There's no more shake and rattle, so the weight is now secure. What I'm going to do now is I've removed the body shell again as I found it easier to rest the chassis on the battery and clean the wheels. Ensure if you do this that you hold a plastic part of the model as I'm here holding the cylinder blocks. Otherwise, you will get an electric shock from the battery through holding both sides of the chassis at once. I've been there and I've done that. So cleaning the wheels is my usual method of a fiberglass pencil followed by a cotton bud dipped in some methylated spirits just to remove any grease or grime that's on the wheel treads and this will ensure nice smooth running when it goes back to Reuben. So I'm just going to show you there that they have the tender hooks under the cab and this haul is about done. So what I'm going to do is just one quick test, make sure the wheels cleaning hasn't done anything uh, untoward. And we're going to have a look at these two centenary coaches that have been sent in to me. 
There's a couple of damaged parts on the underframe, the wheels need a good clean and there are no couplings. Some of the buffers are missing and one of them is missing a corridor connection. Ruben also stated that these coaches wobbled quite a lot when they ran around, but I bought a spare one of these to rob parts off to remend these coaches and it seems to be that all of this type of coach wobble as they run around. It's just the way the bogies have been designed to fit to the body shell. I'm going to be replacing the buffers with these homespun buffers that I made from some nail heads many years ago and I'm also going to, like I said, buy a spare coach to replace the missing corridor connection. One of these coaches also has the incorrect bogey on it. It looks like it's got a bogey from a non-corridor coach underneath. So drilling out the buffer holes there, I just put these metal buffers in place and here's the replacement corridor connection although it is rather dusty and requires a clean so I'm going to give that a quick brush up before fitting it to the model. These don't require any adhesive they simply clip fit into the holes provided into the body shell. These coaches were made by Airfix, Dapol and then Hornby so they've got some longevity to them although the detail on them is quite fragile and as you can see one is missing all its roof vents. But I did my best to repair these for Ruben, as doing too much of these, you would end up spending more on parts than the coaches are actually worth. It was borderline repairing these, as the couplings, buffers, etc. come to nearly £10, and the coaches themselves you can pick up for about 12 so you've got to be careful restoring rolling stock that you're not actually putting dead money into a model that can quite easily be replaced. Here I am just wiping the roofs down with some uh, baby wet baby wipes just to remove all the dust and crud that's accumulated on these. And then, like I said, I clean the wheels with cotton buds and methylated spirits. The bogies on these coaches wouldn't take metal wheels, so I had to clean up the plastic wheels that were in them. They do seem quite wide and require a wheel with a long axle, which I didn't have in stock at the time. The couplings are the typical the couplings are the typical dapole clip-in type. But now that's done and I've painted the buffers, they do look quite nice, even if the roof vents are still missing. So now that I've restored the engine and coaches, let's have a look at them running around my son's DC layout before I send them back to Ruben. If you've got an engine or train you'd like to see featured on a future episode of Trash to Track, please contact me at the email address shown on screen and we'll have a look at getting it sent over and who knows it may appear in a trash to track episode all of its own in the future i'm going to leave you now with some shots of ruben's great western hall and its two coaches running around this layout just under test prior to me sending them back to ruben thanks again for watching trash to track please like share and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next video bye for now